Hi there, Vako here. In this video tutorial, I wanted to show you how to install a countdown timer on Webflow. It's very simple. It's something uh, my students very often ask me and something that a lot of web designers want to do, but there is no way to do this inside Webflow natively. And uh, you all usually need some sort of a JavaScript plugin or a widget, some third party. Uh, application for you to install. Um, I found this the best way actually, the it seems like most elegant way that I saw, I try, tried different plugins, was the one actually that I found right here on Webflow Showcase community. And this is by somebody called Graphic Owls. Uh, really well done. He himself um, got the code from a code pen by uh, somebody else who developed this. It's a JavaScript, uh, regular JavaScript code, and then he implemented this in Webflow and made a project out of this. And this is uh, one of the easiest way to usually get some plugin in uh, your web design project just by because you can clone this and you take, you can grab elements already that are pre-made so you don't have to build anything from scratch. It's very simple, no coding knowledge involved, uh, nothing. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, there are other ways to install a countdown timer by some other widgets, but often these widgets are paid. Uh, then free version has some limitations. You cannot edit them inside Webflow. You have to always uh, mess it, well, basically change things on their website, and it's really not cool. And very often the free version is going to have this advertisement link to their website. That sucks, right? We don't want to do that. We want something that we can manipulate in Webflow, it's free. And uh, so far, I find this one to be the best option. So uh, I'm gonna link this uh, in the description below. Uh, this is uh, the project you want to clone. Uh, we, we, you won't be able to, if you just open this in Webflow, you won't be able to clone this project or get anything from here. Uh, like you can, you won't be able to copy paste between projects. It has to be part of your account. That's why you have to first clone the project. And um, we will do this once this thing loads. Yeah, so clone this. Uh, make sure uh, that you have a space in your account. Either you are paying for the Webflow or you have enough uh, uh, free uh, projects available under your account because if you don't, Webflow is going to give you an error here saying that you know you already reached the limit of how many free projects you can have on your account, so you won't be able to clone this if you already meet that, which is usually two free projects that you can have. Uh, you can always delete if you don't want some, if you don't need some projects that you have, and if you are still on the free account, you can delete some projects and then uh, clone this again, and then you will be able to clone it. Um, create project and just name timer whatever <clears throat> the only thing we need from this project we're not going to use this project for our website right we're just going to copy elements and copy the code that we need from here once you copy everything then you can delete this project so the, the code that does the job is let me show you this again. You go to the pages, there's only one page, home page, and then code is right here. It's under before the body tag. This is where the code is. So first you're gonna grab this, control A to select everything, command A on Mac, control C to copy or do this. And now I'm gonna head to my actual project. This is my actual project, just my website here with a bunch of different pages and uh, I create a new page called timer and I will paste this code. You go to the page, go to the settings, go all the way down, make sure you're not pasting this in the head. You don't want it to be here. You want it here. It's very important. All right. So this is our script that you're gonna get from here. We'll also copy these things, but first I'm gonna make some edits in the script, and this is what you will have to change every time you want to set a new date. This is where the date is being set. The format is like this, and it's important to maintain the format. Uh, 
year, month, a day, and hours. Usually, if you are using, um, you know, date hour, just keep this zero 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 zero. That's the best way. Um, for example, let's set this to Christmas countdown. It's twenty twenty right now, December twenty fifth, and keep it as zero zero. Right, that's the Christmas. Now, uh, some users on that um, project. Um, showcase they pointed out that there were some uh, issues uh, rendering this code on iphone safari uh, and uh, the suggestion that somebody gave was to fix this by using slash instead of dashes and this fixes the issue but um, you're gonna get this code with these dashes so make sure that you're changing this guys to slashes that's all you need to change here and that's it save all right, now we are going to copy this guy. And what you need to copy from here is this JS clock. Everything else is just whatever he made to make this pretty. JS clock is the timer itself, just a very regular, um, couldn't read native clipboard data. Let me do that again. All right, so some of the classes have been renewed because I already have those classes somewhere in my website. And uh, I'm just going to make this a bit more appealing. Uh, the copying happens just regular way, Control C, Control V in uh, Mac, and uh, I think you can just do copy like this as well. Let's see if the yeah, paste doesn't work. So you will have to use a shortcut. So use uh, control, control V to paste on Windows or Command V on Mac. All right. Let's add some sort of wrapper. I'm gonna drop this in here. I already have actually something set up. The only thing that uh, what I set it up, I just gave it a flex box, vertical alignment, uh, aligned in the middle, and gave it a height of 100 VH. So 100 VH is just gonna make it go full. Uh, actually, using 100 min height is better in this case because what if on some screens uh, somebody is watching this on a very small screen and this doesn't fit there. So use min 100 VH in, uh, instead of just a fixed height of 100 VH because um, this way is a lot more responsive. And uh, so this is what we have right now. That's going to work right away. I'm going to publish. And there you go. It's working quite hours, 20 days, five hours, 55 minutes left to Christmas. We can check that by Christmas countdown by somebody else. Yeah, pretty much the same thing, right? So it's working correctly. Dates are being generated correctly. And from here now, um, there is few things you uh, cannot touch. So let me show you. So you cannot touch, so if you're going to change somehow the div block here, make sure that ID in the settings of this div block is JS clock, just like this, because this is what the code is going to use to find, the, find this element, right? And each date is going to be, the code is going to find this by this ID, JS clock days. Uh, same here, JS clock hours, JS clock minutes and JS clock second. So if you're gonna replace, accidentally delete this and replace with just random uh, text, um, make sure then you would have to put this inside the ID. Otherwise, um, the code won't be able to find what you are trying to replace here. Uh, other things, just the regular way, you can change the labels as you want. 
And changing numbers here is not going to do anything. It's going to replace this number. So whatever you write here will be repl replaced. So for example, if you want to do this sort of a line, um, distribution, like when you want to have this uh, semicolon, semi no columns between the text, uh, you cannot add this here. It's not going to work. That all of that will be replaced. But what you can do is uh, add them in between the boxes. So you can let's. I'm just going to copy this guy and paste it and put it right here. And uh, the typeface is being grabbed from here it's from a parent. I guess that's why it's not working here. So I'm just going to change the typeface, which was impact in case of the um, whatever this guy had. Oh, sorry, one more issue actually that I discovered on uh, Safari iPhone. Uh, the um, originally the uh, this wasn't selected the weight, and without the weight selected, yeah. Uh, the Safari the browser doesn't uh, work properly, so you're gonna see it render a sort of a different font on uh, iPhones. So make sure to select the weight as well, or if you're gonna change the font completely, you can do that right there and select this normal, I guess. And replace with column. There's just one fix you need to do here. Make sure to, we'll just, we're just gonna give this a different class. Uh, and give it a negative margin so it's not like this. It's different because the, um, these other guys are inside the box and that's why it's a different alignment. There you go, and now if you, Take this, copy again, move it here, copy, move it here. That's gonna work just fine. It's not going to alter the code or you know mess up with the timer at all. Names, you can change too as you wish. There you go. As you can see, everything is working properly. And if you want to, let's say, give it a headline, Ah, can't find it. And um, time until Christmas. That's correct. There you go, you can do that. And that's going to be fine as well. Nothing will be changing our original timer. Excellent, 20 days, five hours, minutes. Now this one is only countdown. It's not gonna do count up if you want. So you always have to set a date. Uh, and then it counts down from that date. But this is a great use for anything like, uh, I know, coupon codes, timers for uh, uh, discounts, ending Black Fridays, everything like that. And you can completely change the style of this. You want to, you can set it up as you wish. Pay attention to to the box. Box is how the sizes are being um, uh, managed. The font here is managed by the box as well. I think that's it. Hope this was helpful. Cheers.